Well, it's a rainy, yucky day, but nevertheless, Eric and I are headed out to the Brimfield Flea Market in Massachusetts. We wish the sun were out, um, but it isn't. So we're prepared with umbrellas and raincoats, and if we get wet, we'll dry off. So here we go. As you can see, the weather is not beautiful outside. We're just waiting for parking. We decided to park at this church because although it's $20, at least it goes to a good cause. I'm just kind of showing you what I'm looking at here. You can see the cars are already starting to pile up. And here we are. I cannot wait to see what's inside these tents. I'm just gonna apologize right now for my camera darting around, but it's so hard to fix my gaze in any one spot. So please bear with me. I'll do my best to stay focused. There's Eric in his rain suit. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this pew. I wish it wasn't sitting here in the wet rain. There's lots of goodies already. All right, I'm making my way inside. I love this carousel horse. There's more wood outside than seems like a good idea. I'm loving this chicken lamp. It's great colors for the kitchen, but I don't know that it would survive the cats. And now we're undercover. This is a great old tray. It's signed Williamsburg, Virginia. There's some great wood pieces inside. There's aisles and aisles of things. Check out this flamingo pitcher. You don't see that every day. No signature on the bottom, but it's a really fun piece. I've got, again, some really great furniture, some beautiful porcelain, another beautiful lamp. This one is only $15. This is a great sort of desktop. Really fun piece. It's good here because it's not raining. Old sailboat. Do you see all of the fantastic wood furniture? It's like every era is represented. Here's an old tea table. Lots of beautiful bureaus and some nice bookcases. There's quite a few sold signs on things, so I think despite the weather, people have been making purchases. Get this interesting elephant footstool, $65 on that. And this looks like some kind of a cheese plate with a covered lid and another really big piece. It's like a secretary, I think. And a great old rug, black and red and cream. Nice grandfather clock, 1200 on this piece with the eagle inlay. I'm gonna check out these shelves a little bit. I love this planter. Look at the lion head carvings on these chairs. I think I would feel like a queen sitting in those. I love this fabric. I'm not sure if this is a tablecloth or a coverlet, but it's got great colors and a fabulous pattern. This is a wonderful little purse with beads and some other pretty necklaces and bits of jewelry. They have whole cases full of jewelry here. That's a gorgeous turquoise piece. and some more beautiful textiles. These chairs are great. I used to have so many Victorian chairs in my house. This is a beautiful tray. It's actually painted on wood and the colors are phenomenal. I asked the price, it wasn't marked and the price was $60. This is an old baker's rack where you would put things out to cool. I saw quite a few baker's racks. 
and I'm really interested in these vintage garden pieces like this hanging planter that says 58. And I especially like these tall planters that are serving to just hold down tarps right now. There's no price on those. Most things are not priced actually. And I'm really curious to find out a little bit more about them because I think they're really, really unique. Wait, poor Eric, <laughs> there he is. This is a sweet little chest of drawers for 225. We're actually on the hunt for someone who works here to try to price out those planters. I like anything with scroll work, so that's a really pretty side table. And here's a sideboard for $3.95. Old chest, old desk. Oh my gosh, there is just so much here. Look at the carving on this Victorian bookshelf. That is a beautiful and ginormous piece. And here's a great old desk. It has a price tag on it that I cannot read. Little Art Deco piece in the background there. And this is a great frame. It's like a little hutch and some very fun vintage pieces on that. Another old beaded bag. This mirror was awesome, but the backing on it was fairly buckled. So I think it would have a hard time staying straight on the wall. We love this bench. We're really interested in that piece as well. And right now we're haggling, trying to find a price for all of these pieces. This is proving to be un naturally difficult, but we are keeping at it because I really want to take these home with me if we can make that happen. You can see Eric is still negotiating with this guy. I think Eric is going to kill that man, but I love these pieces. Now we're back inside and I'm looking at this awesome coffee table that's also a toll tray. There are so many interesting things to look at. It's just impossible to rest your eye in any one place. Some great side tables and another wonderful hutch. Check out this massive Salvation Army sign. That is quite a statement piece. And I think this is a Shirley Temple doll, if I'm not mistaken. It's a little bit creepy. Here's a great old picture. I wonder if this is from Princeton because they've got the big P on their jersey. And this rug is awesome. And this Buffalo whiskey is actually painted on a window. It's a very neat piece. I don't know if you're seeing anything that you like in particular, but I'd love to know if you are. This is a weird textile that's framed, but it's awesome. This is a little cannery row painting or picture. Another kind of bookshelf piece, but that's wall mounted. And here's some vintage clothing that's really interesting. This piece has been painted, but I bet it was really cool when it was in its very original state. It's a really interesting cupboard back there some cool old signs. This is such a cool lamp. Isn't that awesome? You'd have to have a really nice place for that, like a center table in the middle of a grand foyer, maybe. Oh, that's the cue dad has. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How funny. Old cigarette sign, some old drawers. Looks like something that would come out of a library or a business of some kind. Now we're back outside and we're looking at the garden furniture again because there is so much of it and it's all really interesting. We're looking at these garden obelisks and I'm obsessed with these textile stamps or prints. There's a whole collection of them. Trying to figure out which pattern I like the best and it's not an easy choice to make because they are all fabulous in their own way. Excuse my fingers in this shot. I'm just trying to keep my wet camera steady. I'm going to show you this whole bin of textile prints or stamps. This table looks interesting, but a lot of this stuff is reproduction. Like these dogs, they are not original. They're, they're probably a little bit old, but certainly not original in the way that you would expect. 
And there are some old tractor seats. You've got to be careful in this section because I think you could believe you have an antique when you have a reproduction. So I don't love that in general, but what are you gonna do? This is a really cute trinket box. It's not marked. Do you see all the water on this table? It gives you some sense of the conditions we have out here. It's a sweet teacup. These are Delft, very pretty. This lion is very interesting for $20. I think these are salt and pepper shakers. They're not marked, but they look Danish. And this teapot is interesting. There's some damage on the paint, but it's an old Canadian piece. Art pottery. Very pretty. Down here we have some lighting and some parts for lighting. An old clock, an old fan. This old parlor set is so fabulous. Could you imagine that like in your front room or some formal room, you would feel like you were back in time. I like this plate with the handle and I like the pink and white color combination. It's not marked in any way, but still a nice piece. I have no idea what the price is. And a pretty covered dish. This is lovely. I don't know if that's like a celery boat or a relish tray. It has kind of an Art Nouveau look about it. No price. This dog bowl looks just like licorice's. Hers is a Roseville bowl. That one's not marked. And this is a great piece. It's a uh, Nippon, but there's a little bit of damage on the glazing, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have probably picked it up. Here's another painted trinket box. This is a really pretty piece with all of the fish um, painting on it. I have no idea how much this piece is, but it's very unique, that's for sure. Now we're headed into the next tent and this is mostly clothing. Eric does not enjoy vintage clothing at all, but I definitely wanna check it out a little bit. In addition to clothing, they've got a little bit of porcelain and also certainly lots of jewelry. There's some hats and shoes, lots of different fun pieces in this tent. Check out this fabric. It's so cute, so 1950s, very chic. And there's lots of pretty necklaces here trying to give you a sense of the tent. It's really quite large and there's racks and racks of clothing. It must have taken ages to set this up. I wanna show you just a few highlighted pieces. I love the fabulous bright colors and all of the textures. These are really bright, fun pieces. Check out this necklace with the colored shells on it. There are some really good pieces here. I'll tell you what, if you wear some of this jewelry, you're not gonna look like anybody else, and I love that. Here's some more really fun pieces. Check out this dress. It looks almost Victorian, maybe Edwardian. Some of them are from the 60s, some of them are from the 1800s. There's all different eras representing here. Eric is being very patient with me while I check it out. Look at this dress. Wow. This might be my favorite. 124 for that beautiful pink dress with the embroidered flowers on it. This looks like a Victorian waistcoat. Could you imagine how uncomfortable that would have been to wear? This is a really pretty lace top. Another great dress. It has sort of 1920s vibe to it. These plates are absolutely fabulous. I wish I knew what the prices were. I just didn't feel like asking, but they are really great. It's a combination of Audubon, Tiffany, and Limoges. And if that is not a trifecta of awesomeness, I don't know what is. There's also lots of great costume jewelry and some really fun bags. Yeah, but there might be some good stuff in there. 
Here's another tent with a mixture of older things and newer things. Has a little bit of a French country flair. You can see there's quite a mixture of different things. Baskets, boxes, woven furniture. Here's a great bag. It's like around every corner, there's something new and interesting, like this great old cosmetic case. $20 on this piece. And these are wonderful old tablecloths. They're so cheerful. I love the colors. $29 for that piece. I so appreciate it when there are prices. I feel like prices here are the exception to the rule, but I really appreciate it when I can find some. Like this is $29 for this whole stack of plates. These are call, called Chelsea Chintz. And again, lots of color and patterns, super fun and cheerful. I have to look a little bit closer at these. Good morning. If you saw that every morning, you wouldn't help but smile even before you had your cup of coffee. Here's a little quilted piece. These look like old sacks of herbs or reproductions. I'm not sure if they're authentic. This picture is an old circus picture from 1935, Gorman Brothers Circus. Boy, the stories that these people could tell if they were still here to tell them. Could you imagine? They must have seen a lot of interesting things in their day and I imagine they led pretty rough lives. This is beautiful. I forget what this kind of applique is called, but it's really, really pretty. I like those little canisters and these pots are super fun. This is a beautiful little teapot. This is McCoy, $60. Looks like it's in excellent condition. And here's a tent displaying rugs. There were lots of rugs at Brimfield. We didn't look too closely at them. Look at this man with the umbrella and the bicycle. That is not a sight you see every day. And there's Eric braving the weather. I thought this bed was absolutely fabulous. I don't know if it's a full or if it's a three quarters bed, but in the right room, that would be an incredible statement piece. You can see people have put tarps over things as best they can. Despite the weather, there's still a lot of people out here today. Look at that puddle. That's nothing compared to some of the puddles that we see later on. This is a beautiful fireplace screen made of metal. Boy, would I have loved to have picked this up. A little too pricey for me at $290. Not that it isn't worth it. It is. I just didn't want to pay that much, especially after picking up all of the garden furniture. $290 for this piece. It really is absolutely beautiful. You can see the roads are getting wetter and wetter, and the puddles are getting bigger and bigger. I'm wearing rain boots. Poor Eric just has regular shoes. Here's a whole collection of picnic tables. These are all available for sale. And they are really fun. I love the colors. This coal scoop is excellent. We have one that's very similar to it. I love the white porcelain handles on this. And look at that face detail. Great piece for $30. You really can't beat it. Here's an incredibly ornate light fixture. So interesting. And yet it has a base that can stand on its own. So I'm not quite sure how you would display that. These are nice as well. And I wanted to show you all of the wood furniture that is just sitting out here in the rain. It's killing me. Here's an old metal dollhouse. And behind it, there's an old wicker doll carriage can't imagine it's great for this doll carriage to be out here in the rain. I think a lot of things are probably getting ruined today. It really is a shame. I don't know. 
Yep, lots of wood. I mean, there's a little shelter, but not much. Here's a table full of flooded glassware. You practically have to swim to see it. And really nothing here is priced. Although of course, if anything was priced, the, the ink on the price tag would be washed away in about one second flat. I'm still trying to get a sense of what's out here. It's hard to look when rain is pelting you uh, in the face the whole time, but this whole table is milk glass. I know there's a lot of milk glass lovers out there. It's quite a large collection. And here's another table full of interesting glass and porcelain. These are great old stained glass windows, very arts and crafts looking. And I love this horse hitch. Isn't that awesome? $850. And these are some old theater seats. I would think they were reupholstered at some point in an old rocking horse. We're getting ready to cross the street. We're not gonna stay too much longer. Here's another tent with rugs. We're starting to get kind of cold, so we're starting to wrap it up a little bit, but isn't that a pretty furniture set? It's all been reupholstered. Has a very French country look. This tent is very pretty, actually. I love the old mirrors. Even the ceiling is super pretty. It's got some chandeliers and other lighting fixtures. Gives it really kind of rustic slash cozy look. There's a beautiful lamp with some missing glass. And I love this green lamp. Isn't this awesome? It's like an old oil lamp. It's a great old piece. And I like the smaller one as well. Eric and I both said at the same time, wouldn't Iris love to break these lamps? She'd have so much fun doing that. But you can see there's some excellent examples of stained glass lamps here. Here's an old photo block. And some pretty old prints and frames. The owner made it very clear to us that he was willing to negotiate. I think he was eager to unload some things in this yucky weather. Even the things that are undercover were probably not benefiting from the kind of wet and humid conditions. Again, I'm wondering if you're seeing anything you like. This record made us chuckle. I do a very good Edith Bunker singing the theme song impression, but I need a few margaritas before I can perform that for you. Don't you love these frames? They're so interesting. And here's some more textile stamps. These are all different shapes, which is kind of fun. And a lot of them have some old ink remnants still on them, so you can get a sense that they were used back in the day. And these necklaces aren't particularly old, but they really are super interesting. This whole tent is filled with colorful, beautiful objects. I love all of the baskets and there's some very beautiful rugs. And I wanted to show you the inside of this tent because there were a lot of tents like this where the owner just really was more finished than anything else and had just covered stuff and was ready to call it a day, understandably so. They're beautiful framed pictures. There's so many great knickknacks. This person put sawdust down to try to deal with some of the mud. Here we have some old carnival glass. This was an Italian painted plate. There's some very pretty glassware here. Looks like an old Mason's dish or similar. Some very pretty painted glass, glass with applique. I like the gold on that set. This is really fun with an old fashioned Santa. There is no price on that tea service, but I thought it was charming. And I like that blue and white covered dish. All of this blue and white is nice. None of it is priced. These candlesticks are really excellent too. Very art deco. Check this out. Holland arises to greater things. KLM spreads her wider wings, 1946. 
That's a great historical artifact. And here's some great old tiles. They look handmade. Little cake tin. As you can see, the puddles are getting bigger and bigger as we enter the next tent. Some people have put down cardboard and wood at this point so customers aren't sinking into the mud, which we all certainly appreciate. a big collection of ashtrays and bottles. There's some really fun glassware. Porky Pig is representing. Some old soda bottles. This is a nice covered casserole. This tent is really full of fun things. I like this little toy section. I have an abacus just like that one. And I see some things from before my time and some things from my time. I had a little dog toy like that when I was a kid. Check out this fabulous lamp. Can you even believe how ornate that is? It is really, really beautiful. Oh my gosh, the mud is getting deeper and deeper. This carriage is amazing. Can't you imagine somebody riding that carriage and it's all hitched to horses and it's just driving down the road? That would be incredible to see. It's an old mortician's table there that I'd rather not think about. And on our way out, we see a tent full of gorgeous rugs. Well, there's no question that it was a rainy, yucky, muddy day. But despite the horrible weather, we got some really good deals. And I would say dealers were definitely more motivated to, to wheel and deal than usual because I think they just didn't want all this wet, soppy stuff back in their vans and trucks. So I like what we got. I'll show it to you when we got home. You saw a few glimpses of things along the way. And now I am ready for a hot bath and a hot coffee and anything hot because I'm an ice cube. Well, I got coffee, but I'll be honest, my gas station coffee does not taste like Starbucks. So I'm sulking a little bit, but at least it will warm me up. Cheers. As you can see, we're headed back home and the rain is still going full force. It's the next day. I'm happy to report that I am now both warm and dry after shopping in a downpour all day. It was totally worth it. I'm so glad we did um, make the plunge to go to Brimfield, even in the rain. It was totally worth it. And we both found ourselves saying throughout the day, both Eric and I, why don't we come here more often? So I can't show you most of the things we purchased because they are already gone. Um, so let me explain what I mean by that. So almost immediately I found a whole bunch of fabulous um, garden stuff and I was really excited. I love vintage garden stuff. We have quite a bit. And last year we actually, we had a funny situation where one of our little outdoor patio rocking chairs just like fell completely apart. It was a real cheapie from Amazon. And all of the garden furniture that I had brought into this relationship was really cheap from Amazon. I had this like sort of dinky little porch in my last house. I didn't use it that often, but I like to have a little furniture on there in case I went outside, which I almost never did. In this house, we go out on the patio all the time. So I have two really nice chaise lounges that um, my brother had picked up from an estate in Westport, Connecticut that are fabulous. So we have those and they're really nice. I have this beautiful cast iron set that I bought actually again from my brother who had acquired it from an estate when he was moving. It's fantastic. But all of those pieces are on my father-in-law's covered porch because they're really better off undercover, not really totally exposed to the elements. So while that's ours, we don't really enjoy it. Um, and so we were thinking to ourselves last year, like we need to, when we find them, invest in some better pieces. We have a nice table and chair set. Gosh, that's funny. Again, from my brother who got it from an estate. He worked uh, as an arborist in Westport, Connecticut for many years. And um, he had the pleasure of going through a lot of really grand estates. And a lot of times 
you know, they were having moving sales or estate sales or whatever, sometimes just giving stuff away. And he acquired some good pieces. And then when he himself moved and didn't want to take all that stuff with him, I was really happy to take it off his hands, which I did. And I still have it and he cannot have it back. Note to my brother, Bruce. So I was really excited to find some additional pieces. Um, and so we found three tall plant stands, um, really just shapes I had not seen. I don't think they're antique. I think they're probably just vintage, um, but really unique pieces that I thought would make a nice statement on the patio. Of course, Eric, ever the pragmatist was like, where will we put them? And of course, Chris, ever the not pragmatist was like, I'll find a place. So we will find a place. I can't wait to, play around with them and move them around and figure out exactly where they're going. So there were the three tall ones. And then there was one smaller one, sort of a shorter one with like a hanging basket feature that was also really pretty. And then we also found a great um, garden bench that um, I think will be really solid and pretty in the space and will replace the real cheap Amazon one that we have that looks like exactly what I paid for it. So all of those things are going to be fabulous. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot. We also bought um, a garden. I don't know. You call it an obelisk? Could you call it a trellis? It's like a standing trellis. Um, and that I have uh, several spots where that might look nice. I'd love to grow like clematis um, on that, like with the purple viney flowers. I think that would be really pretty. It would look nice in so many places. So let's talk about price. So the first things we bought were the standing planters and the little hanging planter and the bench. And so we asked the young man who was working there how much they would cost because at Brimfield, and I'll say more about this in a few minutes, like almost nothing was priced. It was so annoying. Almost nothing had prices. In fairness to some of the vendors, some things did have prices, but they washed away in the rain. So like you could no longer read the ink. That's nobody's fault. But in a lot of cases, stuff just flat out wasn't priced. You had to ask. I hate that so much. That is my number one pet peeve when I am buying antiques or vintage items. Okay, rant over. We had to ask the young man, how much is this? And so he said to us, how much do you want to pay for it? Really? Nothing. I want to pay nothing for it. I would like to have it for free. Hand it over. If we're going to negotiate, zero. Zero dollars is what I want to pay. I'm standing here in the rain asking you about your merchandise and you want to know how much I want to pay. I want to pay nothing. So he's like, oh, I can't give it to you for free. Crickets. My husband and I are like, we hate you right now. It's raining. You know, it's the whole thing. So then he goes, uh, no, no, make me a real, make me a real offer. Why is it our responsibility to make the seller an offer? He should be making offers with us. So anyway, my husband goes, a hundred bucks. Guy's like, oh, I can't, I can't give it to you for a hundred bucks. So I'm like, well, what can you give it to us for? What, what is the price you're looking at? He's like, oh, we're gonna have to make a phone call. So he gets on the phone and he's making a phone call to, I don't know, the antique gods. I don't know who he's calling. He's calling somebody. And uh, he's on the phone, he's chatting, he's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, yep, yep, they're right here, and they want to make an offer, and he's doing his whole thing. And it's raining, you know, it's raining, we're like not having it. So he's like, yeah, I can't do 100. No offer, no counter offer, I can't do 100. So I think we said 150, he gets back on the phone, he can't do 150, and finally Eric, who's just had it, was like, I'll give you $200 for everything, the end, including the bench, the three planters, and the shorter planter, 200 bucks for the whole thing. <clears throat> we'll take it right now. Guy gets on the phone again and reluctantly agrees to let everything go for $200. I mean, that was just so unnecessarily annoying. The stuff was great. We were really happy to find it. It's going to look beautiful on the patio. I just don't know why it's necessary to play these kinds of games with people. It just, who has the time for it, especially as the rain is falling on your head? So Eric, the trooper, picks up this heavy stuff and brings it over to where our truck is parked, which wasn't actually that far away. Um, and he got everything settled down in there. And then, you know, we went shopping a little bit more. 
<clears throat> and then I found the um, garden trellis or obelisk and um, it was marked for $90. I think we got it for 70, which was a great price. There wasn't as much drama around that, which is good maybe because we had already bought stuff so that he was more willing to negotiate. And he was nice. Listen, he was a nice guy. I just didn't appreciate, you know, all of the stuff around. Let's, can we just have a transaction here? This doesn't need to be, you know, a big strung out ordeal. Um, so it was, that was a really easy purchase. I, I, again, I think it was like $70 we got it for. They go high, they go high. Even cheap ones go pretty high. It's really hard to find one for less than a hundred. And I don't come across them very often. And certainly around Connecticut, I, I never come across them. It's so funny. I just reached down to Pet Licorice and it's Wilson. I'm like, why does Licorice feel so big? It's Wilson. So anyway, it was a good price. I was happy to have it. Um, and it was, it was pretty easy to pull the trigger on that last piece, having a much easier negotiation than the first time around. So Eric has already taken all of those pieces away to be sandblasted. Um, he doesn't like to get into like kind of chipping away the paint. That paint's probably old. Who knows if it's lead, whatever. He just prefers to have like a clean slate. So a lot of times he'll have these metal pieces sandblasted and then have the same company that sandblasts it paint it. Um, I don't know if he'll have them paint it or not. I think he probably will. And they were originally white, which was very pretty, but our whole sort of setup is in the black range. So I think we're gonna have those things painted black. They could always be painted white in the future if somebody wanted to do that. And again, white's really pretty. It's just not really consistent with what we already have and we want everything to kind of meld together. So I would imagine it'll be probably two weeks or so before we get those pieces back. I can't wait. Um, they were fun finds and I am really excited to have them on our patio. I can't wait to put plants in them and do all the things. And of course, I'll keep you posted as that happens. As part of our much less dramatic negotiation for the trellis, um, I was looking at this great um, textile stamp. I think it's a textile stamp. It's wood, it has this great handle and the pattern is really pretty. They had lots of them. And I looked through, I, I really enjoyed this pattern. I thought this was really pretty. I kind of wonder now if I should have bought more than one, but the truth is he threw this one in for free with the obelisk slash trellis purchase. So I didn't want to push my luck, but I was really happy to have this. I see these, um, I see people pick these up on thrift store trips all the time. I have never seen one, or at least I've never noticed one before. So this is a fun piece, this is for myself. At the same place where we bought all of the garden stuff and that little textile stamp, we also bought this beautiful covered Lennox dish. This is really pretty. It's in excellent condition. Here's the bottom. And you can see all of the beautiful detail going all around. And of course, the gold tone handles are great. It is Limoges, which you know I love so very much. And let me give you a better look at the cover. The original price tag is still on. I haven't taken it off yet. And the cover is also stamped with the Limoges insignia. So this very pretty piece was $15 and we got it for 10, which was absolutely fine. I love it. And it reminds me very much of a pattern I just picked up in, at Pandemonium in Where's Pandemonium? Pan oh, Deep River. Pandemonium in Deep River. Uh, I'll show that to you in a minute because you can see I don't I don't think they're an exact match, but they are very similar. So here is the beautiful cover dish that I just bought. I absolutely love this. And here's the dish that I recently purchased at Pandemonium. You can see it's not an exact match in terms of the set, but the style of the design is very, very similar, especially if you look at the light blue flower. You see the light blue flower? And then look at the light blue flowers here. Very similar kind of style. So I was happy to find this piece. I'm gonna hold on to this. You know I'm not good at letting go of Limoges. I let go of it sometimes, but it's never easy for me. Um, and this is fun and a fun reminder of our trip, so. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with this piece. 
I picked up this Adirondack frame. The print is cute too, but I don't plan to keep the print. I love Adirondack frames. I have quite a few, and this is a really nice one. It's a nice size. It was only $10. And my plan is, um, Eric has been working really hard to redo our foyer and stairwell. And what I want to do is put family portraits and pictures and things um, up and down this stairway wall. Um, we had that when I was growing up as a kid. I always loved it and I've recreated it in every house I've ever had. So it's going to look really nice. And we want to have lots of pretty old frames. And as I said, I already have quite a few Adirondack frames with family photos in them. So this will be a nice collection and that's gonna be a really fun project. I worry about the amount of holes in the wall it will cause because poor Eric, you know, doesn't love holes in the wall, but I think the effect will be really nice and I will certainly show it to you when, once that's done. I was able to get this little picture out of the frame without any difficulty. It's very cute. It's got some age to it. I really couldn't even estimate how old it is. Um, this is the back. But if anybody would like this, it would be my pleasure to ship it to you. But of course, no charge. This would be a really easy guy to mail over to you. So if you're interested, if you would like it, send me a comment saying that you would like it and send me um, your email information so that we can exchange addresses. I don't want to do that on the YouTube comment section so we can have our privacy, but uh, it would be my pleasure to send it to you as just a little thank you for watching. So if you do want this, I will pick the first comment that I read um, asking for it, and that will be the person who receives it. The last thing we picked up at Brimfield um, was this beautiful, I don't know if this is technically like a coverlet or a tablecloth, but my intention is to use it as a tablecloth. So I'm gonna have to stand up to show you this guy. This beautiful tablecloth. It is really, really nice. It needs to be washed. It's actually still kind of damp <laughs> from yesterday. Um, but I think this will be so lovely. I cannot wait to get it on the table. At the risk of confusing you, I just wanted to show you the tablecloth now that it's been washed and dried. So this is like two days later, and I think it looks really beautiful on the dining room table. I am so happy with it. It's exactly what I was hoping for. I have just a plain white tablecloth underneath it and it cleaned up absolutely beautifully and i think it gives a really nice elegant look to this table so hopefully the cats won't bother it oh and by the way i paid 35 dollars for it i wouldn't say that i regret not purchasing anything i think um i did really well i'm very happy it, honestly if we had just bought all that gardening furniture and left at that point i would have been perfectly content um and we didn't stay that long by the way we were only there for about three and a half hours we saw probably two percent of what there was to see brimfield is huge there is so much there you really want to spend the whole day but between the pouring down rain and i was getting really cold and you know my um my leg is still not where it was it will get there it will get there but it wasn't even a year ago that it broke and you know brimfield of course is all you know sort of like hills and uneven surfaces and my leg did really well i was very proud of my leg later on um, my leg had a lot to say about the experience so there was some advil but overall I was pretty pleased, um, but I, re I not regret, but I was very tempted by the black tray. Um, it wasn't metal. It was like a wood tray with like the toll painting on it. It was really beautiful. The um, buyer wanted $60 for it, which was a fair price. I felt, you know, because it would only have gone in my own collection, but I didn't really have a place for it. You know, our wall space is pretty much, you know, covered. And this tray I think would have been at its best advantage hung up. So although the colors were fabulous with our dining room color scheme and it would have been a beautiful piece, I didn't pop on it. And I think it was the right thing. The other piece that really tempted me was, um, it was a large textile. It was black and very ornate. And again, you know, the seller and I couldn't decide if it was a coverlet or a tablecloth or what it was for, but I really just didn't have a place for it. 
she wanted $40 for it. And that was a really good, again, really good price. Um, I could have gotten the two for a hundred. I probably could have bargained her down even a little bit more. Um, but you know, where are you going to put the stuff? And again, I didn't want to be like sort of greedy. I was really happy with the furniture. I love the other smaller pieces that I acquired. I think it was a really successful day. And, um, yeah, hopefully somebody else will find those awesome things, have a perfect spot for them and will really enjoy them. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. We had such a good time at Brimfield. It was really fun to show you all the cool things that I got. If you ever have a chance to go to Brimfield, go. And if the weather isn't cooperative, go anyway. It really is worth it. Again, I showed you the teeniest, tiniest corner of it. There is so much there. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, even if you have to like book a trip, and stay overnight because you're not within driving distance like I am, truly. If you love antiques and vintage things and you wanna just see a beautiful old town, go to Brimfield. But in the meantime, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a great day. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Please like this video if you liked it and if you hit the notification bell, you will be notified every time I post a video. And that is always on Wednesdays and Fridays, sometimes Sundays too. Until then, have a good one. Bye for now.